Welcome to a short reflection by Sebastian Mafud in Canto 19 of Dante's Paradiso. The angel of the Lord spoke to Philip, Get up and head south on the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza, the desert route. So he got up and set out. Now there was an Ethiopian eunuch, a court official of the Candace, that is, the queen of the Ethiopians, in charge of her entire treasury, who had come to Jerusalem to worship and was returning home. Seated in his chariot, he was reading the prophet Isaiah. The spirit said to Philip, Go and join up with that chariot. Philip ran up and heard him reading Isaiah the prophet and said, Do you understand what you are reading? He replied, How can I unless someone instructs me? Acts 8, 26-31 With this, Philip baptizes the Ethiopian, opening the door to him for eternal salvation. Who would have known that whole peoples might be saved by the Holy Spirit spreading like wildfire among them? There are things in the mind of God that we cannot know. Our hope lies in our salvation, but God's mind is deeper than we can plumb. Though the problem of evil can be resolved by our understanding that our fidelity to the Lord is what saves us in spite of external calamity, we do not really have a capacity to get too far beyond that insight. Chardy explains that man must be content with the guidance of Scripture and with the sure knowledge that God is perfect, good, and just. Dante wants an explanation, though. What is the nature of God's justice? And he is told by the eagle that it's inscrutable, because the creating word exceeds its creation infinitely. And this brings us back to Virgil, about whom Dante might still be thinking when the conversation with Cacciaguida on defending the faith against non-believers made him wonder about them in terms of those who had no chance to be evangelized. The eagle summarizes Dante's thought. A man is born in sight of Indus's water, and there is none there to speak of Christ, and none to read or write. And all he wills and does we must concede, as far as human reason sees, is good, and he does not sin either in word or deed. He dies unbaptized and cannot receive the saving faith. What justice is it damns him? Is it his fault that he does not believe? Christ is clear on this point, as reported by John 6, 44-51. Amen, amen, I say to you, whoever believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate the manna in the desert, but they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven, so that one may eat it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever, and the bread that I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. For this reason, who is Dante, the angel asked, to take the judgment seat and pass on things a thousand miles away, who cannot see the ground before your feet? These who falsely cry out, Christ, Christ, not just in what they preach, but in the paucity of their demonstrations of faith, the eagle concludes, will be scorned by Ethiopians when the two bands are formed to right and left, one blessed to all eternity, one forlorn. All the virtuous pagans, Chiardi notes, will be closer to Christ in limbo than those professing Christians who damned themselves. Indeed, they already are, if we remember the Mount of Joy that lies just outside Hell's Gate, and the fact that those in limbo are, aside from the neutrals, closest to it. Chiardi adds, though, that since Dante has allowed one pagan, Virgil, to ascend to the earthly paradise, it is perhaps his understanding that the virtuous pagans will be settled there after the judgment. Higher than that, they cannot go, the eagle has explained. To this high emperor, none ever rose but through belief in Christ, either before or after his agony. A statement that covers the Christians and the Jews, and explains the division of the mystical rose in the Empyrean, which we'll note further when we arrive on the scene. In the meantime, all that is required of us is to rest assured in the soteriological mission of Christ, to remain steadfast in our faith, and to love God, self, and neighbor in such a way as to allow the light of Christ to shine through us, and to glory in that light.